Grand Prix this weekend and it is pretty obvious that F1 has come to town. Because the race takes place on the Marina Bay street circuit, it means that the cars twist and turn throughout the city and it also means that there's a lot of merchandise stores and show cars like this that pop up all around the place. We've seen people with caps and shirts on, we've seen people arriving at the track. So we are going to take you on a tour around the city to show you just why this F1 race in Singapore is so amazing. First up on our tour is Little India, or Tekka to the locals. Now you might be wondering why I've brought you to Little India when I'm doing a tour of Singapore. Well, there is method in my madness. Last year in 2012, Narain Karthikeyan, the first ever Indian motor racing driver, crashed during the Singapore Grand Prix, causing a safety car, which meant that the race still has a 100% record for having a safety car make an appearance during the race. Now, at the moment, this area is looking super colourful because they're getting ready for Deeper Valley, their festival that starts next month. So, I'm going to go and have a little wander around and try a few things out. to Chinatown. Now there might not be a Chinese driver on the grid for the Singapore Grand Prix this weekend, but there has been a Chinese driver taking part in F1 in 2013, Ma Ching Ha for Caterham. He took part in practice at the Chinese Grand Prix, so who knows, could he be here next year in 2014 for the Singapore Grand Prix so that everybody here in Chinatown has someone to support? It is so busy here in Chinatown. There are people playing games over there in the centre. There are beads, jewellery, bracelets to look at. There are sweet treats. There are deep fried treats. So I think I might go and get involved. After tasting all the delights in Chinatown and Little India, it's time to get touristy. We've come to the Singapore Flyer, the tallest Ferris wheel in the world, 30 meters taller than the London Eye. And it went up in 2008 after three years of building. But only a couple of months after it was put into motion, the Feng Shui masters got in touch and said they couldn't have it going anti-clockwise. It needed to go clockwise. So it changed direction. But interestingly enough, Marina Bay street circuit still goes anti-clockwise. Could we see it change anytime soon? I'm not sure. I think it's time to go for a spin, don't you? This is definitely one of the best places to watch the Grand Prix. Down there, you can see the paddock and the grid, and then you can see the circuit as it snakes through the city. You can also see the hotels that some of the drivers were staying in, the Mandarin Oriental, the Pan Pacific, the Swiss Hotel. But hang on a second, this race takes place at night, so what happens when the sun goes down? At night time, people come up here to Sky Park. It's on top of the world's most expensive standalone casino property. It's worth eight billion Singapore dollars. The building itself was designed on the shape of a deck of cards and the view is incredible. From here you can see Marina Bay street circuit turn 13 down there just in front of the Fullerton Hotel and either way this building is probably the best place to watch the Grand Prix. If you're looking for somewhere to toast the winner, you have to head here, Raffles Hotel. It's named after the famous Stanford Raffles, who founded Singapore, and the hotel itself was set up by two brothers from Persia. It's still going strong, and it's the perfect place to come for a cocktail. Now, they might have taken Singapore Sling, or Turn 10, out of this year's race for the Singapore Grand Prix, but I think it's about time to end our tour and have one of the famous Singapore Slings. Thank you very much. Singapore. What I love is the engine start button. Yeah, the start button, the Manatino, Ferrari's favourite switch. For